when you travel as a band, there's so many different ways to travel. Uh, we just travel in a, in a sleeper bus, and that's one feel. And then sometimes you have, you, you drive in small vans if it's a shorter a period of time that you're traveling. Uh, and sometimes you fly, depending on where you are. And uh, for me, I like it to be different. The changes will keep it fresh. To be in a band and travel with a group of people, uh, that's like a small family, uh, you know, you, you know each other well and you know how people they, uh, look in the morning and it's quite uh, intimate in a good way and then you play, it's, it's uh, very special. I think this place is quite amazing, I mean it's the architecture and the colors, the details everywhere, is, it's insane, I mean it's so well made. And there's this strange energy here. It's a bit scary. It's this Twin Peaks, dead people. And then again, like, there used to be a lot of life, but now it's quiet. It's, it's got this crazy vibe. Hey! Oh! Try to bring the, the, the trumpet it's in totally here. Totally <laughs> If it was a white room, it would be different. And would you, I think we like it a lot in there. Boy, boy, then. <laughs> <laughs> Night. <laughs> Gotta make music, man. This is like uh, television news on television, you know, like. Good evening. You want the, the keyboards somewhere around here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. But why don't we set up similar to, to when we do it live and then, but more like in a in a half circle and, and, and you look towards us, kind of. Not I mean, we can play everywhere, but sometimes if you, if you have a big stage and you are far away from each other, and it's like, ah, I'll catch you on the drums, then you might want to feel it closer, like physically, but also you can kind of feel it, the energy. Now I get the chance to see the band, actually. And they're hot.
Me and Lars are the main core. Uh, we write the songs. Lars is the main songwriter, but we work on all the songs together. And Lars is the producer, so we spend a lot of time in the studio and going back and listen, come back saying, "Oh, what about this or that?" Uh, so that works well for us. You know, I, I create a foundation for a, a track and make beats for it and and make the horn arrang ar arrangements on, you know, shit horn sounds on, you know, MIDI, MIDI keyboard sounds and it sounds like r really, really bad <laughs> until, you know, I call the horn guys and they get down to the studio and record it properly. And the same with drums. Um, Raleigh gets down and plays the beats on, on top of a loop or something, and then, and then I might remove the loop or blend it together or something. I don't want it to sound too, too live. I think that's, that's almost uh, too easy or something. It's, it's not what the asteroids are about, I think. It's, it's, it's cool that it's... Um, I like the horns, for example, to, to sound like samples, almost. So it's like, ah, is that a sample from an old James Brown album or what is it? But it's cool in this environment, you can really make some great natural sounding recordings. That's what we're here for. So that's an alternative version of the asteroids. We don't say we like 60s. We say we like these sounds. Where are they from? Maybe you don't know, you know. We, we like uh, old children's shows from Denmark, psychedelic, uh, crazy sounds and stuff. Uh, uh, we like the, the, this big band feel um, of massive horns. Um, and we like, you know, spy movies and gangster series and we like it to be bombastic, dramatic and romantic and filmic. We like to to paint with the music. So this is kind of our soundtrack.
people say your music is so uplifting and party, but if you listen to the lyrics, it's not. It's very sad. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I, I listened to the Beatles and like, bang, bang, Maxwell, Silver, Hammer, and I thought it was bang, bang, go, banana split or something. Uh, and I would dance around and then uh, when I, I learned English and I went back and listened to the lyrics and it was about someone killing uh, with a hammer. And it wasn't happy at all. And it shocked me. And major, we like, is about the rise and the fall and how to survive in, in having the social code. Um, and maybe it's bombastic and it's, you, you feel like driven to it, but you know, that's the great thing about music. You can feel whatever you want to feel and you don't need to be told how to react to this. Some people listen to the lyrics and get, oh yeah, okay, and other people like, bah, 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 you know. Our music is not happy or sad, it, only. It's, it's a mix. We are not a happy-go-lucky band. It's dramatic. And drama can be blue and romance at the same time with the drama darkness. And that's what we like.
We have a different people playing horns with us, um, and right now it's uh, Fribo, and he plays saxophone and flute and keyboards and bongos. He's got uh, a lot of things to do. Yeah, that's really great. That's what I love the most. It's like being able to play all sorts of stuff because it's, uh, I don't know, I often, I often get tired and bored by just playing one thing. <laughs> and I really enjoy running around the set, playing different stuff <laughs> all the time. That's great. I play in some other bands as well, yeah. Um, I'm a drummer in a sort of an indie band in Denmark, and uh, then I play a lot of folk music, actually, like traditional Danish folk music, which is beautiful. <laughs> Ben and Marcus, they're from the UK, and we were looking for uh, two people used, that we used to play together uh, as a horn section, and we would like to bring them to this thing to make a massive horn section. And then it was a bit of mad organisation to make sure we could get out here two days later and learn the music, <laughs> get the music. Um, but yeah, it all came together, and here we are. <laughs> Me and Ben went to college together at the Guildhall School of Music. Um, and sort of for the last ten years or something, we've been playing with all kinds of bands in London and, and, and abroad. Basement Jacks was out, we did for a long time, Amy Winehouse. So we did a lot of work for XL Recordings, which is a record label on Beggars, playing with the Raconteurs, Vampire Weekend, Dizzy Rascal. Um, yeah, lots of things through that label. Every tour we went with Basement Jacks, they'd decide on something stupid to put us in. Yeah, which involved skirts or spacesuits or gorilla suits or... What else do we wear? I can't remember. I've erased it from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I will do anything for, for money. <laughs> so I think that's why we're successful. We have to wear some strange clothes in our career. Yeah, man. I got some more effects now. Let's do a reggae man. They're lovely guys. Be nice good. To do it's good music. It's good fun. They all seem like nice guys. So we'll see what happens, I guess. Mikkel, uh, he plays guitar, he also plays keys. Um, he is uh, an old friend of me and Lars. We used to play together many, many years ago, and he recently joined the band again. Um, so it's good to have him back. I, I, I travel a lot with him as well for acoustic sessions, so yeah, we call him Jungle. Some people use these uh, new, um, like, synthesizers, guitar synthesizers. Are guitar boards where all the effects are in one box but I like this old-fashioned way where um, each pedal has their own effect you do a lot of fun, funny stuff but you have to uh, be concentrated and focused in another way you, don't, you can't take it over all the time because you have to do it uh, one good take all together so you have to really stick in, so it's funny.
last plays the bass. Actually, he used to play jazz piano before grabbing the bass. Um, but he plays bass and plays piano when we play live. This is a, a Fender P bass. I think it's from 75 or something. It's, it's weird how old instruments affect me. Uh, I think a lot of people feel that way. It's, it's almost like you hold a piece of history in your hands and, and uh, you want to perform better or something. I don't know what it is, but it, it just feels good to hold a 30-year-old instrument. And it still works and it sounds better than newer ones often. It's just my thing with echoes. I don't know what it is. I just every um, bass in the band should have an echo. Like all the keyboards has an echo. I have an echo. The guitarist has an echo. Um, just need the drums. <laughs> Put an echo to the snare or something. It could be fun. Well, this, this is called a ribbon controller, and it's it's basically a, a synthesizer but without keys, it's just one string of, uh, of sound and it's only got that sound in it and you can mess with that sound with pedals so it can be really techno and you can put echo on it so it's super spacey and we use that a lot for sound effects in, in, beginning of, in the beginning of songs or as outros or whatever. It's really nice and very addictive. You want to use it all the time. I'm trying to learn to play the drums, so because Rale actually wants to sing. And we, <laughs> we think about swapping. So because everyone swaps a lot, except for me and Rale, and we were like, we want to swap as well. We will swap. We will swap. So maybe uh, Ladies this know. year, <laughs> we're going to swap. Uh, Rale is the drummer. He's been with us from the beginning. And I think he's uh, one of the best drummers I've ever known. And he's so wild and really good at what he's doing. He's got this beat and feeling going on. Well, it's like six years ago I moved to Berlin. And I stayed here for like four years together with another band. Actually, I was playing in it at that time. And we uh, actually had a rehearsal room here. It was really, really great. Like We had some great times here. And it's fun to be back. It's a nice studio. We have uh, Pro Tools here, and I just have some, um, some tracks, and I play to a, to a click track. And then I just like, yeah, put my drums on top of it and count the other ones in. Like, like there's always like a bass and bass drum and, and snare and some keyboards and some percussion and I guess on some tracks maybe some backing vocals but that's about it. I don't think you, you actually notice that there's a backing track when we play live because it's like mostly our own instruments that's on top of it and the backing track is more like subtle you know underneath to make it more punchier.
a year ago or maybe one and a half year ago, we, we um, did a cover of Men Without Hats, uh, 80 song uh, called Safety Dance. This cover song is one of my favorite 80s songs. It's just, it's fun to play. It's got, we, we brought some horns to it and a fresh feel. Uh, I like that. I, I think the covering uh, songs is what helps keeping the music alive. I don't know what's going on because we've been traveling and touring and been working on deadlines and stuff. So um, I don't actually really think about how is it right now. We're just working it and going with the flow, you know. Uh, Denmark is a small country. It's great. But um, we just wanted to explore the, the world if possible and, and travel, you know. That, that must be a dream for most people in general or at least artists and musicians to to get out to as many people as possible. Uh, so that's, we're working that. I think it's, it's going quite well. Um, it's exciting. I feel very lucky. <laughs>